So this is going to be my review of the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 lens. And I, you know, I teased this review a little while ago, said it was coming, I was going to be able to review it. Um, and someone said, I really want to know what is all of the hubbub about this lens. Well, I can sum that up and give you my review in just a sentence or two by saying that currently there is no better non-prime lens that you can put on your crop sensor camera than this lens. And there are even very few primes that match this lens. The value of it is excellent. So let's take a second though and we're kind of pick apart what this lens is, what it means, and let's start with the cons. It's not cheap, but you really can't expect a groundbreaking lens to be cheap, and it is still certainly in the affordable range. At $799, $800, I've seen it going for just a little bit less than that, but don't expect the, this lens price to be dropping anytime soon in the next year, two, or three. Remember, lens prices really don't fluctuate or drop over time the way that camera bodies do. So it's going to be sitting around the $700 to $800 range for quite some time. That certainly isn't cheap, but as I said, it is in the range of affordable. When you're walking around with this lens, you're basically walking around with a bag full of prime lenses. So it starts at 18 millimeters and it offers f1.8. There are no primes right now that I know of that are 18 millimeters and have an aperture of f1.8. Then you can go to 20, you still got f1.8. You can go to 24, you still got f1.8. Sure, there are L-class lenses that offer 24 and f1.4, but that lens costs almost twice the amount that this lens does, and it's a prime lens. It's fixed, and the image quality, or the, the, the sharpness, is very, very similar. You can go to 28. You can go to 35. You get an idea here I'm being a little repetitive, but across all of that range, and it's actually not that large of a range, but we'll talk about that in a second, you get an f1.8. And so again, it's like carrying around a bag full of primes. It's almost as heavy as a bag full of primes. It's a significant lens. It's about two pounds, 72 millimeter filter size on the end. Comes with a nice cap. Um, comes with a nice lens hood. The build quality is excellent. Full-time manual focus with a nice distance indicator here. This is a great star nighttime shot lens. Uh, I've been doing some of that with it. The moon has been hampering some of my star pictures, but still getting some successful. The focus ring, the zoom ring feel very, very solid, very smooth, no hints or hesitations in there. And really, this lens is an excellent value. So I mentioned that it has a limited range. You're talking 18 to 35. This is roughly a 2x zoom. Now, I feel greedy in saying that I want anything more than that because it does offer that f1.8. Keep coming back to that, but that is what makes this lens special and the fact that it is so incredibly sharp at f1.8 across its range. Review after review, lens test after lens test shows that this lens rivals lenses like my favorite 24 to 70. This is a $2,200 lens. This is an $800 lens. They actually weigh the same amount. Uh, full frame crop sensor. Uh, so you're talking what about 1830 something to about 56. So it's just starting to get into the range of portraits. Uh, I would love just a little bit more, but as I said, I'm starting to feel really kind of greedy. This lens on a nice crop sensor like the D7100 or the newly uh, coming out 70D is really a sweet pairing. It's also wonderful on the T5i. D5200. I give, um, you know, I give the 18 to 55 from Nikon a lot of crap. Uh, it's not a good lens. I hear from people again and again. I bought the Nikon. My pictures are all blurry. Again and again, I say get a better lens. If you really want to see that sensor shine, put something like this on it. Yes, it costs as much as the camera, but then you're going to have a fairly portable, low light package um, at a good price or a good value. Again, I know, I recognize that it's getting expensive, but when you look at your alternatives, it's excellent. Uh, sure, you could walk around with this. Uh, you have a more convenient range, but you're giving, this as being the 24 to 70, but you're giving up that stop of light or a little bit more than a stop of light from f1.8 to f2.8. Uh, and you are paying, what, $1,400 more? Pick this lens up plus the 51.2 and you have an incredible low light package for your crop sensor camera.
So in this first shot, we just have some uh, weedy flowers that are backlit. One of the things that I mentioned is that this lens does an incredible job of uh, controlling chromatic aberration. In cheaper lenses, uh, very bright areas or contrasty areas, you're going to get a lot of purple fringing. You can see here that the uh, little fuzz on the stem of these flowers is really nice and clear. This picture here, you're going to get an idea of the range. So this is at 18 millimeters. The top of the light pole was the focus. And here is at 35. So about a 2x zoom, I'm saying. Uh, not a huge range, but again, really nice. Here is a tree completely backlit, shooting directly into the sun, so we are getting some lens flare. But again, up here we have very clean lines on the edges of the leaves that are completely, brilliantly backlit. Razor thin, some of you who follow me on Instagram, uh, razor thin depth of field here at 32 millimeters, almost 35, and f1.8. So this is kind of a dreamy, fun lens. Bokeh in the background is just so smooth, so nice. Shot of a bee on a flower. We can zoom in here and just see the detail in the fuzz and in the wings. So it's not a macro lens, but you can focus very, very close. And of course, using my crop to zoom. Just as I said, this is a portrait of me getting into at 35 millimeters. This is a nice portrait. Uh, you know, my uh, there's no distortion here, no serious distortion here. Proportions are good. So as I said, the moon was has been battling against my starry night pictures. But here's one where you can just start to see a hint of the Milky Way. 25 seconds long. I didn't follow the 500 rule, so if you zoom in, you can see that the stars are actually not dots, but they're starting to streak as they move through the frame. But f1.8, 18 millimeters, um, nice and wide for a starry shot. And here's another one that's a little bit better at 15 seconds, and we can see that the stars are closer to dots. Gorgeous wide open vistas, 818 and f8, just incredibly sharp lens, really, really nice. Uh, colors through this lens are L glass quality. Stand of these aspen trees, another wide shot of a wedding venue that I at recently. Long exposure here, eight seconds, f25, 18 millimeters. Uh, you're starting to catch some stars in the sky. Another portrait shot, 35 millimeters again, f2. Again, proportions are nice, so you can use it for that. And now here's a quick video that really illustrates your razor-thin depth of field. So this was shooting at f1.8, uh, and we can press play here. And you can watch that depth of field move down the fence and you also watch it increase. That's a good lesson in distance affecting your depth of field. The further away your subject is, the larger your depth of field. So if you have a crop sensor camera and you're looking for the best lens money can buy and you don't want to mess around with primes, this is your lens. There really is nothing too negative to say about it except some people might find the range just a little bit limiting but it is a really, really nice lens. If you have any lens, any questions, lenses, questions, uh, just leave a comment down below, or even better, come over and find me on Facebook. I do a better job of keeping up with questions there. Uh, and if you wonder if this lens is right for you, feel free to ask. Let me know what you shoot, um, how you're shooting, and photographing, I mean, and I'd be happy to give you some thoughts on whether or not I think it's a good value for you. For most people, the answer is going to be yes. Thanks so much for watching.